Wait, remember Rocket Power? They truly were riders on a mission. It was the turn of the century. The edgy and punk rock feel of the 90s was bleeding into the early 2000s. Things were grunge, yet had a style that can only be understood and appreciated for those who lived through it. This isn't a, oh, my generation is different type of thing. These are just the facts. Look at our fashion from then. Yeah, my point proven. One show was able to capture this era of hip new slang, the thrills of action sports, and a beach life culture that truly pinpoints this moment in time, rocket power, coming from the same people that brought you the Rugrats. Nickelodeon wanted to keep what made them special in the 90s, and rocket power was more of that. It's something that could fit in with the other cartoons on the main Nickelodeon channel, and it could fit on Nickelodeon Gas, or Games and Sports. Ah, that channel was rad. Today, let's take a look at rocket power, and if you enjoy the video, you better subscribe, grab your board of preference, and let's carve. I only eat gnarly surf for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Welcome back to the 25 Days of Fringemas, where there's going to be brand new videos every single day from December 1st to December 25th. Hop aboard. Rocket Power, at its core, is another slice-of-life show, my personal favorite genre. But it didn't just focus on the people themselves, it focused on the fun and intense action sports and street sports that feel so pushed aside for the sports in the spotlight all the time. We center around a main friend group of four people. Otto Rocket, voiced by Joseph Ashton, is the more rebellious one of the group who is always quick to put any responsibilities or even his friends aside for his own goals within the different sports that he plays, being hyper-competitive in his ambitions ambitions of becoming one of the most famous superstars in several different sports. His sister Reggie, voiced by Shayna Fox, has a lot of those same traits her brother has, but isn't as self-absorbed and more compassionate to those around her. But don't mistake that for her never having moments of trash talking. But all in good fun, all in good fun. Her goals lie in her writing skills and specifically her magazine titled The Zine. She's a pretty well-balanced character that has quite a bit of depth throughout the series. Twister, voiced by Ulysses Quadra, is the not as smart but super skilled and sports type that deals with a lot at home thanks to his older brother, who he and his friends usually end up being antagonists throughout the majority of the show. He's also the videographer of the group, usually seen capturing the coolest of tricks or the gnarliest of wipeouts. Then we have Squid, voiced by Sam Saletta, Gary Leroy Gray, and Sean Marquette. He is the newest to the friend group who at first didn't seem to fit in, being the most nervous in the group often being scared about the more extreme stuff they all get into, and the one that gets the most hurt sometimes as well. But that's all good because he's really smart, and when it comes to some sports, he fits right in, like being the goalie when they play some street hockey. There isn't too much to the story of the series aside from this group of kids doing some fun and interesting sports, from the street or from the sea. We also spend a lot of time with Otto and Reggie's dad, Raimundo, voiced by John Kasser, who owns and operates The Shore Shack, a boardwalk restaurant along with his good friend Tito, voiced by Ray Bumatai, who really helps serve as an uncle figure, often giving Raimundo or the kids words of wisdom based on stuff he learned in his life and from his background coming from Hawaii. Like I mentioned, it's a pretty laid back show with a slice of life vibe that also has some really fun action sports, amping up the excitement of the show. So naturally, there isn't really any true antagonists. Just the typical bullying from Twister's brother Lars and his friends as well as the Stimpletons, Merv and Violet. Though Merv is the one who really gets angry at the kids, Violet usually is nonchalant about most things, but he gets mad at the kids most likely because they are in the later stages of their lives, trying to have a peaceful life and with all this racket outside of these kids making noise doing their extreme sports, he finds it hard to keep his cool towards them. Oh no! How awful! We'll be right back to Rocket Power on Nickelodeon. Now we're back to Rocket Power on Nickelodeon. A staple in Nickelodeon animation, Klasky Chupo really owned most of the real estate on the channel, from the Rugrats to the Wild Thornberries to As Told by Ginger to, ah, real monsters, and of course, Rocket Power. Their style is pretty easy to identify, but each one of their shows is unique in their own right. Rocket Power is no different. Arlene Klasky and Garber Chupo, having all of these other shows, came up with the idea for Rocket Power when seeing their own kids starting to play and participate in action sports. Arlene was also a 
kindred spirit towards it as she grew up around surfing living in a beach town. This combined into making Rocket Power a show that showcases and celebrates the sports that especially at the time were taking over the interests of a lot of youths out there. For me, personally, it always came down to skateboarding, which is something I would do throughout my young and late teens and even a bit as an adult, while still having a huge appreciation for it now. Rocket Power felt like the show that understood this era greatly and represented the culture behind it very well. Well, as well as a kid's cartoon can. At its core, there's really nothing much deeper than kids just hanging out and involving themselves in various activities within these sports. But the series also focuses on the individuality of these characters, who they are, how they view the world with their wants and passions, and how that can affect their relationships with one another. Otto, who mainly acts as the lead we follow the most in the show, usually has the most struggles. While he is extremely talented in most of the sports we see him partake in, he's not perfect and is prone to messing up, getting hurt, and most times getting angry at those facts. But very rarely does he ever give up on wanting to land that trick or surf that perfect wave. His character usually has to deal with the morality of what he wants versus what has to be done to get there, most times involving hurting others. No, not like that, like emotionally damaging them. This often results in him having to learn some pretty harsh lessons in ways that truly do affect him. Whether or not they actually help is determined by how fast he does something similar again in a future episode. His sister Reggie is a lot better at balancing her passions and how she treats others, very rarely ever feeling like she needs to do whatever it takes to get to the top. Her real competitive side comes out in the fact that she's the only girl in the group and most times would get called out for this fact by others, only helping fuel her level of skill while in competition. She's able to dish it out on the pavement and in her writing for her work on the zine, a magazine that she owns and publishes. To balance out Otto, she is the empathetic one, the one with compassion for others, a lot of the time resulting in her having to hit pause on what's going on for the safety of others and making the smart choice, or to think things out for just a moment. Both of them have a pretty great relationship with their dad, Raimundo, who, like I said, spends his time working at the shore shack in which he owns and operates. He has a love for beach and surfing culture, being that he's a surfer himself, and of course his restaurant is on the pier. He tries his best as a dad to parent his kids while still giving them the freedom to explore their hobbies and interests. But this can prove to be a hard task sometimes due to him being the only parent and having to work all the time. His wife and the kid's mother, Danielle, passed away off screen before the show started. We do at one point get to learn a lot about her and how she and Raimundo met, but he does eventually end up getting married again later in the show to Noelani, who was Danielle's best friend and Tito's cousin. Man, Raimundo has no chill. Tito also helps out in a few ways, serving as another parental figure to the kids, which extends to both Squid and Twister, telling his stories of the ancient Hawaiians while serving as a partner at the Shore Shack. I wouldn't be surprised if most people claim him as their favorite character, as he's mine. He's just a really wholesome dude who sees the best in everyone. Twister, I think, has a very interesting story overall. While still very athletic and involved in everything the group does, he tries to fill bigger shoes than he can wear thanks to the constant bullying from his older brother Lars and his friend group, usually with Lars picking on him at home or Lars and his friends picking on the whole group when they cross paths outside. He's not the smartest either, resulting in some pretty questionable logic, but for the most part, he means well, usually taking out his aggression on Squid in the form of jokes, the type of ribbing friends would do to each other. Sometimes here though it does get taken too far. He does, however, get to shine in his passion for videography, always ready to capture some sick moments on camera. Speaking of Squid though, who was just referred to as Sam or Sammy when he moved into the neighborhood where at first, the vibes, ah, they just weren't there between him and the rest of the group. In the pilot episode of the show when he first meets the rest of them, it's kind of awkward, but Reggie, because of her nature, quickly starts building a bond with him. Later, he gets invited along to play some street hockey and isn't faring too well keeping up with the others and sadly leaves, and the rest of them pay no mind as it is what it is. But later on, by random happenstance, while speaking with Reggie, a hockey puck is launched his way and he is able to block it from hitting him, or I guess getting past him, which sparks some hope and interest in Otto that this is the goalie that they've needed. And once he straps into play, he actually is perfect for this position in the game where he proves to help in their game against Lars, where he is now dubbed Squid, which used to be Twister's name from the group, which he is really happy to no longer have. I wish someone would tell me what's going on! We'll be right back to Rocket Power on Nickelodeon. Yeah.
Rocket Power premiered on Nickelodeon August 16, 1999, and carried on for four seasons ending on July 30th, 2004. It ended on quite an interesting note dealing with the whole wedding for Raimundo and Noelani, but it's the kids' struggle in accepting that fact as well as ruining Otto's chances to finally reach some level of stardom and notoriety thanks to linking up with Sean White. But it comes down to him having to choose between going and taking part in this massive competition to do so, or attend his father's wedding, which had to be moved to the same date due to a family superstition on the bride's side. And while the decision doesn't bode well for Otto having to decide either going to the wedding for the sake of his dad, instead of achieving something that can change the course of his life, it's hard to really see this moment being a selfish choice like we would see from Otto before, but rather one that he's been working for since he first got on any form of board. Luckily, he is able to compete because the wedding was called off due to Noelani overhearing something and understanding it in the wrong way. But of course, there comes a moment that defines Otto and his morality. Once he is informed that Noelani is leaving Raimundo and going back home in order to save their relationship, he need to drop out when he's so close to winning. But he ultimately chooses his dad's happiness over his own future chances at this moment. In the end, everything turns into a happy family ending. But it was still a hard morality choice not only for the character, but for us the viewers to go through it. Really getting to understand both sides here. But who knows, maybe Otto had another chance in the future as he grows up to do so. But as far as the show, that was where we left off. Luckily the show doesn't really have continuing stories, just episodes that continue character traits. You'll get some fun action sports action in each episode, and some of the most memorable scenes aren't these larger scope specials or TV movies. In fact, I think the moment I always look back on for Rocket Power was the episode Enter the Hawk Tricks, which premiered September 10th, 2001. I swear, this episode was hyped up to the max because it featured none other than Tony Hawk himself, where the crew get to shred at the secret Hawk's Nest skate park in an effort to convince him not to retire from skating, which just turned out to be a big misunderstanding between what he was doing as a break versus what the media thought as him retiring. If you were a skater at this time, this episode was everything, and it was just fun to fuse more real-world legends from these sports into the zeitgeist of animation. All in all, Rocket Power is such a harmless little show that I feel it gets overshadowed by the larger-than-life cartoons from around the same time. Now, don't get me wrong when I say that. This show was still pretty massive. It had four seasons, TV specials, a crossover Rugrats comic book, and even a bunch of video games. Do you know how much I played Rocket Power Dream Scheme on the Game Boy Advance back in the day? Heck, do you know how much I still play it now? That sounds like a video for the gaming channel. Subscribe there if you haven't yet. I think Rocket Power, while feeling a bit dated upon a rewatch, still has all the charm I felt for it before. It feels like a nice love letter to the kids who picked up a board, hopped on a bike, strapped on some skates, and hit the pavement. But there's one ultimate lesson I've learned from this show, and I think it's important that you hear it too. And that is, no matter what life throws at you, no matter what you have to deal with, that you never, ever become a shooby. Let me know your thoughts on Rocket Power in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Later. The balance between problem solving and the universe working itself out. All that I have is all that I need. But to actualize it, I can't doubt. No.